Hello and welcome to Biology Interest. Today we're going to be looking at haemoglobin as part of the A-level biology revision series. Now haemoglobin is used to carry oxygen around the body. Red blood cells contain haemoglobin. Haemoglobin is a large protein with a quaternary structure which essentially means it's four or multiple, in this case four different proteins joined together uh, into a big molecule. Each protein chain has a hain group which is essentially an iron ion and is what gives the haemoglobin its red colour. Haemoglobin also has a high affinity for oxygen, meaning each molecule, each haemoglobin molecule loves oxygen. In this case, each haemoglobin can carry four oxygen molecules. In the lungs, the oxygen can, can join with the haemoglobin in red blood cells to form oxyhemoglobin, which I'm going to draw a equation of right here. This is a reversible reaction, meaning it can go back and forwards, and it's important to know that this is a reverse reaction in terms of how haemoglobin binds with the oxygen and then also unbinds and releases it when it needs to. So next we're going to look at how the percentage saturation of haemoglobin can vary. Percentage saturation is how much the haemoglobin, how many oxygens the haemoglobin has attached to it, be it one, two, three or four. And this depends on the partial pressure of the oxygen surrounding the haemoglobin, which is the oxygen concentration essentially around the haemoglobin. The higher the concentration of dissolved oxygen in the cell, the higher the partial pressure. And also there's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, which I'll talk about later, which matters as well. Now, haemoglobin's affinity, how likely it is to bind with oxygen, depends on the how high the partial pressure of oxygen is in the cell surrounding the haemoglobin. When there's a high partial pressure of oxygen in the cell, oxygen loads onto the haemoglobin and when there's a low partial pressure in the cell, it unloads. So high partial pressure lungs, where there's oxygen being brought into the blood, into the cells, and a low partial pressure in respiring cells, where the oxygen is being used up. So it means you have the oxygen bound to the haemoglobin in the lungs and then released from the haemoglobin where it's needed, where there's a lack of oxygen. So next we're going to look at dissociation curves to do with the affinity for oxygen and how it varies depending on the partial pressure. And this essentially shows how saturated the haemoglobin is with oxygen at any given time. So whether it has one, two, three or four oxygen molecules bound to it. So I'm going to draw the curve right here. At the bottom we've got the partial pressure on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have the percentage saturation of oxygen of the haemoglobin. And I'm going to draw the curve and it, they always tend to look roughly like this. And the reason human haemoglobin, adult haemoglobin, looks like this is that when the partial pressure is high, haemoglobin has a high affinity for oxygen and it will readily combine with the oxygen, so it has a high saturation with oxygen. When the partial pressure of oxygen is low, haemoglobin has a low affinity for oxygen. This means it releases the oxygen from it. That's why there's a low saturation of oxygen. Now you may wonder why this graph is S-shaped. And that's because the haemoglobin combines with the first O2 molecule. And when it does this, its shape of the molecule in a way makes it easier for to bind with other molecules, the other oxygen molecules. That's why it gets steeper. It means there has to be a smaller increase in partial pressure for oxygen to bind or be released with the haemoglobin. But as it becomes, starts to become saturated, it kind of levels off again. And so it's more difficult to essentially get the last oxygen bound with the haemoglobin. And so that's important to know when interpreting this graph. Now, 100% saturation means four oxygen molecules. 0% means no oxygen molecules. So next we're going to probably look at the carbon dioxide concentration and how that also can affect the oxygen unloading. So we've got our dissociation curve with saturation on one side and partial pressure on the other. 
we're going to do the look at the Bohr effect, Bohr effect, which is the effect carbon dioxide has. And so, it, hemoglobin essentially gives up oxygen more readily at higher partial pressures of carbon dioxide. And so, it's basically a good way of getting oxygen to cells during activity. When the cells respire, they produce CO2, which raises the partial pressure of CO2 in the cell, and this increases the oxygen unloading. So the dissociation curve essentially shifts to the right, and this saturation of blood with oxygen is lower for a given uh, partial pressure of oxygen, meaning more oxygen is released. This is called the Bohr effect. And so the shifting of the right means at a higher partial pressure, the more oxygen has already been released from the molecule, as you can see here. The curve on the left is the one it would normally be, and the curve on the right is the one with higher concentration of carbon dioxide. Which is useful in for, uh, highly respiring cells, essentially. It means that the oxygen is released much more easily, before, basically before all the oxygen has been used up in the cell, um, and allows the cell to continue respiring and doing its function such as a muscle. Now hemoglobin can vary in different organisms and this is also quite an important one that might be a question that comes up. Different types of hemoglobin have different oxygen transporting uh, capacities and this can help survival of various organisms. For example organisms that have low concentration of oxygen environments have hemoglobin with a higher affinity for oxygen and this means the, the left of us meaning at a low partial pressure, the percentage of saturation of the hemoglobin is much higher, meaning there has to be a lower concentration of oxygen around the cells for the hemoglobin to take up oxygen. Meanwhile, very active animals are going to have a curve more to the right of ours because they have a high oxygen demand, and so their hemoglobin has a lower affinity for oxygen, meaning it releases oxygen uh, slower. It's more difficult. There has to be a more gradual curve. And this means that the cells are take uh, the oxygen is taken up and released in the correct place. So, for example, D is a really active animal, such as a hawk. C is more of a human dissociation curve. B is an animal living in a high altitude where it needs to make, utilize all the oxygen it can get. And A is an animal living in a low oxygen environment. So, like, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more A-level revision guides. Thank you.